So here we are with really poor lighting, and I'm going to do it accordingly, which would be if this only occurs for my 8 p.m. students, exactly. So the dark one, dark horse here, but like, we can see me and I'm a human and stuff. So most importantly, we can see my hands. Uh, so just, you know, talking about this one hand at a time. Nice. Yeah, totally. I tried really hard to like be a musician when I grew up, and I decided I'll be a guitar teacher. Awesome. Yeah, turns out, yeah, I know. I'm just looking around. Yeah. Um, cool. So like, great hand. That's our biggest thing this time around, and it's going to be shifting from you know the position I usually use, which is I pin these two fingers here, my thumbs straight, and I do stuff to my thumbs parallel to the string, um, or you know, like that, my wrist is straight. We talked about having your arms slung around the guitar rather than like that where everything's kind of down weird wrist. Um, and yeah, so our fingers are curled, which allows us to move away from the instrument, use a more limited range of motion versus straight where everything's up, 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 and you end up on the wrong string or whatever. Goal being just like hovering right above the string, sitting tend to, and thumb-wise it'll also be kind of this away from the instrument type of thing. Uh, if we think about like hitting a thumb note really hard, that's the only way to do it without running into the string beneath it. But, like, you know, like, you know, just boom. So, first and foremost, just like stop now and play the easiest thing you ever can conceive of, finger style. You can literally just be like, I'm picking notes and pausing really de-emphasize rhythm and have a really excruciating half hour of your life where you try to adapt to this new technique. Um, really don't make the left hand part interesting at all. Theoretically, you can just sit here with open strings and work on it, which is a thing we're, we're going to do sometimes actually, just separate out our hands where it's usually clearly the hard parts over here. This is a tough change where you can just do this over and over to learn it versus get to it in the song, and here we're in the other case where it's, this is clearly the hard part of what we're doing, so you can just use open strings. Um, anyway, so we're like two minutes into your video, stop and do that. Uh, and with, you know, with your pinky resting here, I'm going to encourage you not to do it. Reason being we want to be able to go from finger style, like doing percussive things in there too. Um, but if it feels super intuitive to put it there, it's all good, and the annoying part, we can really just think of it as like every single time you hit the first string, the high E string, you're going to be using your ring finger now. It's, you know, these three guys on adjacent strings, and for this week we're just putting on one strings, one, two, and three, which is the first, second, and third string, first string, sixth string, which is the most common position, uh, and then followed by we are like that sometimes too. Um, so yeah, stop and do some of that stuff. And then I wrote out a alternate bass tab song. So, you know, just kind of if you're starting here, just warm up a little. And then let's just go like, you know, and just spend some time doing that until it starts to feel like actually really natural. Don't have to think about it, just the thumb notes on their own. And before you try to do it ongoing, maybe just do like eight total notes, pause, do eight total notes. Um, Obviously, you'd like to figure out how to do this on your own. That would just be more efficient than just like trying to do it by feel right at the beginning. Not the most important detail. So there we are. And we're going to be playing those right on the downbeat. Um, so we're doing this song, the one that I wrote on the page, where we're in a G chord, um, which, if you like, you can totally play G like this while you're thinking about the right hand part, and then switch to this after you've mastered it. Um, so there's not too many things to think about. Like we talked about during the lesson, we want to know how to do G with this sort of G7 grip with Pinky because of all this. Times where we're going between C and G, um, chord like E, there would never be a reason to use these fingers because it like totally decues this one. Um, but a chord like G, we totally do multiple ways for the same notes. A is another example of that. We're like this or this or all kinds of stuff. So it depends. Here's the thing we're doing, and I'm going to go two beats at a time. So our first two bass notes, the first one is just a naked bass note on its own, and then with our next bass note, we're hitting the second string, so that's like this, these, and I'm going to be doing that to be yeah, demonstrably like so. And just do that a few times, really being technique minded, don't turn it into a song that loops there that goes, 
like conscious focus, boring. I'm really focused on this little new technique concept. Um, not so much what you're playing. So just do that a few times, and then we're gonna start at beat three. So we've just gone, and then we're about to go. And there's your first ring finger note, know. and then pinch, which is gonna be hitting your high bass note at the same time as you hit your index finger on the third string, which is the position that your other technique wouldn't have accommodated, or you could have found a way, but it would be straight fingers. Um, cool. So our second, so beats three and four, it's like. So we just went. Cool. So. And I would like you to get good at doing that one single time. Pause, do it again until it actually feels easy, and then start to try to loop it. But only after you do two total of them. You can have to if I like fall off a cliff, we never do a lesson together again or whatever. This is really helpful stuff. Um, when you're learning a repeating pattern, it's the optimal order to put it into your long-term memory right away is uh, you know just break it into little bits and go over it and get good at doing it one single time. Pause, reset, reassess, do it again. And then before you move on to looping it over and over, do it two times total. Stop, reassess, because that kind of like, you, there you're like, I have learned how to do the transition. Mm -hmm. And it's really a natural temptation to like turn little parts of songs into something that repeats that or whatever. So, you know, learn the dance steps and then dance. So it's going to sound like... If you want to hit different strings, it's cool as long as you're using your thumb for the three low strings. And these three strings are for those guys. So there's that. Get all kinds of good at that. Seven minutes into your video uh, is where I'm switching to C. We're still using the exact same techniques and so forth. Just our thumbs going because we're in a C chord now. And I changed the rhythm. We were going one, two, three, and four. Now we're going one, two, and three. And then we're putting our pinky down here and doing the same exact version pattern. We're really close, I'm just going to just cross that last note out because it makes it more not just the same thing. So, first half is. Now just really stop and do the same process for just that first measure of C. And then without starting at the beginning, work on the second measure of C, just go, you know, not starting at the beginning of the line, but the bar marker going. Stop so you get good at it, and only then try both of them sequentially, and only then try playing the G stuff, followed by the C stuff. Uh, that's how we form also memory. I can't believe how little my colleagues in teaching materials, you know, emphasize just literally what order to do things in when you're learning the songs. Um, so there we are, seeing that in action. Hey, left hand wise, we talked about you know having our thumb in classical position. The way we were most easily tricked into doing that was by putting four fingers over on the bass string so that each one of them occupied a fret and didn't feel like a reach. We talked about not having your elbow pinned against your body, or that that's what makes it feel really hard to play F. But yeah, it feels easier. Um, so yeah, we're you know moving more shoulder and elbow. Um, and there's two total thumb positions. There's I'm playing in first position, doesn't matter. And then there's I'm in classical position. Your inclination for bar chords has been to have your thumb up quite a bit higher than we want. And we also talked about how we're going to use this part of our finger, the very first knuckle when we're playing bar chords. So do anything with bar chords. It can even like have an arbitrary rhythm where you're doing the least interesting thing ever. And then let's incorporate the picking technique we talked about. It's all this stuff, and I purposely did this last. If you don't get to that much rhythm guitar stuff, cool, because we got plenty of other things to think about, but there we just talked about that wider range of motion, slinging your arm around here, uh, versus like, you know, um, so that we hit the strings with the same amount of attack each time, and you have been guitar lessoned. <laughs>